So, Michael, thank you very much for joining us today, and the Zoom is yours. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm happy that uh, Learn Quebec invited me to uh, present these Terry Fox activities. As uh, Chris said, I'm I'm local. I'm in the Montreal area, and I do most of my stuff uh, outside of uh, Quebec. You know that other big province just to the west of Quebec. So I'm really happy to be doing something, enfin, uh, in the uh, Montreal region, and hopefully we'll be able to do uh, some good stuff together. So Michael Quinn, I'm with Taking It Global. It's a nonprofit based in Toronto, hence the Ontario emphasis. But we have a federal government grant until uh, March 31st of 2024, next year. But anything you do today or learn today, would we're not going to stop at the end at the end of March. You do it for the whole school year, and you can tell your principals and uh, supervisors never going to get a bill from us for for anything that that we can provide and help you with. So this Terry Fox theme has got multiple parts to it. So this will be the first time you're learning about some of the parts, I think. You can think of it as today what you're doing is you're walking around the buffet table at a restaurant or a hotel reception, and you're going to look at different things um, and get a sense of, yeah, that interests me, and maybe I'll pursue this thing further or take it back to my table. So there's three different things we're going to show you, I'm going to show you, and you'll do, hopefully, you'll like one of them or two of them or three of them. If you don't like any of them, I'm not insulted. You know, life goes on, etc. I you know, you just I'll just keep trying tomorrow with something else. So, you're just getting a taste of things today. So, the first thing we're going to look at is uh block-based coding with make code. So, maybe uh Craig, you'll put that in the in the chat and you should go there now. I'm going to share my screen. I assume some of you have done uh, block-based coding before. Actually, I'm going to turn my video off now so I can... Uh, everyone, just thumbs up, Craig. You see that? We're at the Make Code site. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are... The first thing we're going to do, actually, I'll take the video off. We're going to, we're going to code this micro bit. We're going to code it to count the steps that a student could do in the schoolyard, in the park, in the gym, et cetera. And the point of it, I mean, why are they doing that is, first of all, they're learning math, they're learning coding, uh, computational thinking skills. But in part two of what I'm presenting today, they will compare what they did, grade four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, student to what Terry Fox did. And it's quite amazing or mind-blowing what he did. So first, what you go there, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to code this object, this uh, piece of robotics, so you can count the steps. So I'm going to go to new project. You should do the same thing. Give a name, something relative to what we're doing. I'll just say count steps. You can say whatever you want count steps. I'm going to hit create. Okay, now I'm in the editor for um, um, make code. So there's already two blocks there. I actually don't need some of these blocks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get rid of these two right here. You can get rid of uh, make code blocks in two ways, and I'm going to show you the ways. I can right click on one. I'm on the on start, and then a little sub menu comes up, and the fourth option is delete. So I'm going to delete it. The other way to get rid of a block that you don't need is grab it and copy and drag it over to the categories uh, on the left. I call them categories. Some people call them drawers. There are different types of blocks you can use. And we're going to use um, probably three today. We'll see. Okay, so you can get rid of those. So the first thing I want to do is I want to 
I want to create or something to happen when this thing gets moved. Because eventually, if the student takes it into the schoolyard, they can either attach it to their wrist or I bet someone on this call, on this Zoom has already uh, done um, a, a detachment and maybe it's time. Yes, so there's there's Craig's shoe and he's already attached the micro bit to his shoe. So in theory, every time he went around the block, uh, it would record how many steps uh, it took. So how do we do that? You're gonna go into the input category, the second one, it's sort of a purpley mauve. And you're going to click the on shake and move it over into the work area. So you have one block there on shake. So when this block gets shaken, what will happen? I want this to happen. I'm going to go into the drawer that's red and called variables. I'm going to click on that. And I want to make a variable. I want to make a variable. So I have to click here. You could have many different variables. I want to give a name to the variable. A variable in math could be x, y, whatever, forward, size, etc. I'm going to call it something simple like steps. I'm going to click OK. So when I did that, automatically some new blocks were created. The set the steps to and the change the steps and, and my, my variable down here. Again, I, you could have more than one variable in different projects. So I'll assume that you're OK. Remember, you go to on shake variables and create a variable. So you should see something like that. The next thing you'll want to do is you want to grab the second block, the change of the steps, click it over here and slide it right into this opening underneath on shake. And it should go in nicely and you probably didn't hear, but there's a little click. So it means when it's, it's fitting in, it's like a, a Lego blocks that uh, you've played with either you or your kids and you click them together and they fit and they make that nice sound. So I've got, when this block gets shaken, I will change my steps by one, my count. Okay, so we're, we're part of the way there. The next thing I wanna do is I want to show the number of steps that I've done. I've started walking, I've walked for 20 seconds or um, 60 seconds. How many steps have I done? So I'm going to go to the basic one, the first one, the blue. And I want to choose the first block, show number. I'm going to grab it, show the number. I'm going to choose it, uh, place it after it. So it would be illogical if I put the blue block before the change the steps because it wouldn't be recording them. So I want it right after change steps. And now I've got a complete um, set of blocks that should work. Now, for those of you who have not used a, a micro bit before, on the left, you see uh, a virtual micro bit. So it's, it's like a simulator. Before downloading something to the physical micro bit, it's always really, really good to test it on the, on the virtual micro bit, the simulator over there. Because if it doesn't work on the virtual simulator on the left over here, it will not work on your micro bit. So you'd be, you'd be sort of having to do things again and again and again. So test it. So there's a, there's a little button here that says shake. I'm gonna uh, click it and we'll see what happens. It's, it's simulating that I did a physical shake of the micro bit. Oh, hold it. Oh, oh, so, oh, I made a mistake. So what I had to do, I was talking, I forgot to put in the variable here. When I was talking to you, I forgot the last step. Instead of show the number at zero, I want to show the number whatever the variable was. 
my error of talking too much. On shake, change the steps by one, increase it by one each time, and then show the number of steps I've taken. So let's try it again. Here we go. So I'll take a little break for 30 seconds and make sure your code should look like this, what you see on the screen now. Now remember, you've got actually, Craig, I don't remember, did we put in the chat the cards that they can get? Uh, I'll drop that in now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get a whole set of cards now that are explaining exactly what I've done up to this point. And in fact, I'm on uh, card six. I mean, the first card or two were just sort of title pages, but, and you and your students would have all of these cards. You don't need to, uh, you know, make copious notes about what's going on. You're going to be walked through the cards just as I, if I decided to make something fancy for dinner, I find a, a recipe book and choose a recipe I thought I could do and follow step one, step two, step three, step four. So Craig has put in the chat the, um, yeah, he's done that. Thanks, Craig. Okay, so we're on, we were literally on card number six. So if I kept doing this, it would keep going up. So I know that set of blocks is working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another uh, set of blocks to this project. I'm going to go to uh, input. Choose not on shake, but I'm going to choose on button A pressed. And I'm going to drag it over here. On button A pressed. Okay, now what do I want to do with here? This is This is just an idea. You can... You can choose something different if you like. I would like an encouraging message to be shown when button A on the micro bit is pressed. An encouraging message, just like, you know, if someone was running a marathon or a race and uh, someone was on the sidelines, they would say, keep going, you're doing a great job, wonderful, whatever. So what's my encouraging message? I'll go to basic. And I'm going to say show string. String meaning a few words. Show string. And I'm going to put it in here. It clicked in nicely, so I know it's going to work. If it doesn't work, sometimes the block will not go. It will be rejected from being put inside of that um, input. And I don't want to say hello. I'm going to say uh, great job. You could. You could write whatever you want. Obviously not war and peace, but uh, something, you know, encouraging or, you know, would 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 give uh, some, yeah, encouragement to the runner. So I'm going to just put that. Now, remember I did before and I should make it work now on the simulator button A that simulates button A, the physical button A. So it's appearing, it, it scrolls and it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to read, um, but it does appear. I think if you go into uh, uh, the full screen mode and I'll show you how you do that. If I click button A here, it's a bit easier to read, maybe not. Okay, so that, that full screen mode is underneath the simulator. It's the sixth or last, so blow up your screen type um, image. So I've got this working, the shake is working, the button A is working. Let's keep going. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna add a new button. I'm gonna go back to the input. I'm gonna take button A again, but let's see what happens. I'm going to put it right under here. It didn't remain pinkish mauve. It went uh, sort of a grayish, brownish color. Why? Because it's telling me I already have a button A command. And I cannot have a second one. That would cause too much confusion. So what you can do here is right in the where it says A and a, and a 
sort of a drop down arrow, you have two other choices and we're gonna use both today. So I'm gonna choose B, it turned purple, which means I haven't done anything with B yet, so it's free and available to be uh, programmed. So I'm gonna go back to the basic show number. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm not gonna make the mistake I did before on, on shake, I'm not gonna leave it at zero. I'm gonna go cho choose variables, the red uh, category. I'm gonna grab steps over here. So I've got one command now. I'm gonna add some more in a second. I'm gonna go back to the basic, the blue. I'm gonna scroll down and there's a pause. I think it's second to last is the pause. Like wait, there's another command we might use in links later, it's called wait. Same thing, take a break, pause. Put it here right after this one. You can go in and choose. So 1,000 is one second. You might choose uh, one second. So pa pause 1,000 milliseconds. It's totally up to the student to choose whatever number they want. And I'll, I'll say, after you've shown me the steps, wait a bit. And I don't want it there forever. So I'll go back to basic and I'll say, clear the screen. Okay, so. I have three, I have on button B pressed, show the number and go to the variable steps and tell me what the number is and then wait and then clear the screen. So let's try it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake, keep shaking a bit, get to a number it's easy to see. So we got number seven, okay. Now I'm gonna hit B. Oh, I must have kept shaking. So I went to 10. I'm gonna uh, clear the screen. Let's go, where are we at now? We're at 11, 12, we're at 12. I'm gonna hit B. I got 12, I waited a bit and it cleared the screen. So button B works. So I've got two button buttons working. One to count the number of shakes Remember, what in, in this project, it'll be the movement of the student as they either walk, like Craig attached it to his shoe, or you can attach it to your wrist if you like, and uh, the number of times they, they move it. And I've got an encouraging message. We're not going to do it, but you could have other encouraging messages here. You could add, after a great job, you could add in an icon of a heart, like you're doing great. You could do music. You could choose. A, a little tune, da 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 dum would not be a good one. I'm not going to choose it, but you could do a nice, uh, nice tune that they would uh, hear. You you don't have to stop with great job. It could be words, it could be images, icons, and it could be uh, sounds. So I've got two now. I'm going to add a third and final uh, button. I'm going to go to input. And it. Take the one that's A and I know what's gonna happen. It's gonna go dark because I've already chosen A. I'm gonna do A plus B. So I'm at A plus B now. And what do I want to happen for A plus B? We want to reset the micro bit to zero. So why would you want this? Because probably you won't have one micro bit per student. So after student uh, one uh, walks for a distance, runs for a distance and, and records either on a notebook or a piece of paper, whatever uh, their, their number of steps was, before they hand off the same micro bit to uh, student two, they should reset the number to zero. Otherwise, the student two will just be counting student ones plus their own, et cetera. So it would be, uh, it would look a bit uh, strange. So what am I going to do now for this? I want to reset to zero. So I'm going to go into uh, variables. And I'm going to choose the set, set steps. So 
sorry. Set steps to zero. Okay, but that's not what, what uh, the only one I want. Then I want to show the number of steps. Okay, on button A plus B, and you got the A plus B by going into where it said A and you did the drop down menu, just like I, we did for button B pressed. So I have set steps to zero and show the number of steps. I want to show the number of steps, not to zero. So I want to go like this. So your third option of A and B should be set steps to zero and show the number of steps. And then student two would take the same micro bit and then start their walk or run. So let's let's see what happens. Let's go through the thing again. I'm shaking. Oh, I must have changed something. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm at eight steps. Well, I'm at nine, I guess I click one more time. So I'm at nine steps. If I press button A plus B, I'm handing it off from student one to student two. Student one recorded on a little piece of paper or the notebook, I did nine steps. Obviously they did a lot more. And it goes to zero. So student two can take it now, the same micro bit. Remember, a micro bit can only hold one program at a time. So it's the same program that's going to be on the micro bit for all the students who will use the same micro bit uh, to do their walk or their run. Okay, so this is the this is the code to do the micro bit. Everything is in the P that uh, Craig put in the chat. And I do have a certain number of, of these, sorry. I have a certain number, not unlimited supply, but I do have some printed cards already. Um, I don't know how many we are in the group, but uh, I can get a few to the schools if you like this part of the, pro uh, the project. So that's the, that's the micro bit pro part of the project. There's not that many lines of code, as you can see. There's less than 10. And actually, you know, there's a sort of a duplication of, of quite a few of them. So it's not an overly complex project. Uh, it involves variables, so math. It involves, obviously, coding, in, uh, physical education, uh, social studies about a great Canadian. So you're hitting on a lot of different parts of, of the curriculum. So I'll see if there's something that otherwise I'll move on to another part. Okay, so so Chris and Craig have been answering stuff. So okay, I'll assume everything is fine on uh, I have a question. Yep. I may have missed this because I was just rushing to get here uh, after my class ended, but the, the physical micro bit cards themselves, um, how do we get that? Okay, Th these cards? No, like the thing that you stick on your shoe. Oh, the, the, the physical, the, the micro bit. Okay, so uh, yes. two answers. One is your school or district may have them. There were a lot of them distributed in in Quebec in the last few years. I'm not saying your school has any, but it's quite possible. You might check with Chris and Craig afterwards, but we can get some limited number. If if you do not have any, I have some. So your your first uh your first uh sort of line to go to is the school learn Quebec, but I'm the backstop. I'm the I'm the third you know, person to say, I struck out with my principal, I struck out with Learn Quebec, you know, Michael Quinn, can you help me? And Michael Quinn will help you. Um, Michael, um, 
Cynthia is actually a consultant at uh, Sir Wilfrid Laurier. So she visits tons of classrooms. She'd be a perfect candidate to get a class set. So actually, would... <laughs> I'm back to teaching this year. Last year I was consulting. Oh, you are. <laughs> I'm back to teaching this year. <laughs> so then you definitely need a class set. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, so look, I'm. You, you'll figure out how to reach me after because there's going to be a survey and you can write your comments in and as, as to what you need. But uh, yeah, I mean, for, for reasonable quantities of micro bits, we have them. So again, and again, we have them. You as a taxpayer and everyone on the Zoom has paid for them. I mean, they didn't, I, you know, they didn't come from some magic pot where we're, we're all taxpayers and we all funded this project across the country. Okay, um, so where am I gonna go next? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, do you see this? Terry links, Terry Fox steps, just maybe thumbs up, I guess. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay, so now we just left make code, which is block-based coding. And now we're into uh, text-based coding but a text-based coding language that was designed for students. It was designed for basically, you know, what I call middle school students, grades four all the way up, uh, seven, eight, nine. It wasn't designed for computer science uh, students at Concordia or McGill. So it's an easy to use introduction to text-based coding. And we think of it as the, the next step after kids are comfortable with um, with block-based coding, which you just saw. So I'm gonna turn off my, my video again. So what this is, this is not st strictly speaking a coding project. My team did this coding, but what's neat about it is the students could take their whatever number they got from their physical micro bit when they ran or they walked, and they can just input the number into this field here. My cursor should be flashing at enter the number of steps you ran or walked. Okay, so they would take what they recorded on that slip of paper after they did the walking with the micro bit and they'd put it here. So I'll, I, unless someone wants to throw out a number, I can put a number in here of number of steps. 2000 steps. It's a pretty decent amount. Uh, then they hit calculate and we will have uh, resource materials to explain this to, but again, this is pretty easy. It says, you know, enter the number of steps and then calculate. So we've done the math. And we've done based on a uh, based on an average step of a ten to twelve year old, which is about sixty centimeters. This is how much it would come out to in kilometers or miles. So again, it says it right there: sixty centimeters is the average that a ten or twelve year old uh, would do. Okay, so they, they would all get different numbers. Some would run, uh, walk 1,000, some 500, some 3,000. Again, this is, this is really good for a class discussion. I'll show you uh, why in a few seconds. It's three pages. You click the orange arrow to go to the next page. You ran, walked, it just repeats it. So Terry Fox ran an average of 42 kilometers per day. So what's fun about this is sometimes a number is abstract. It's just, oh, well, what does that mean, 42 kilometers? You can't, a 10-year-old may not be able to wrap their head around it. But if they know what they did, how many steps they took, now compare it to what he did every day. So I'll hit calculate. Every day, Terry Fox ran this. Okay, I have to click OK again. So he did 70,000 steps a day. So I think this could be, you know, eye-opening uh, for kids that someone could do 70,000 steps a day. So, uh, you know, I know the, the health goals are do, a, you know, do 10,000 steps a day is a great health goal. Uh, 
My son almost killed me in May looking for an apartment in Boston. I did 44,000 steps in two days and didn't speak to him for 24 hours. He was looking for an apartment. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was uh, this it's it brings it into the realm of the we uh, the real world. I can associate 70,000 steps now because I did a thousand and I was exhausted. And Terry had serious physical health issues to deal with. And maybe the day I was walking was a beautiful day like in Montreal today, but Terry had to walk every day. He didn't have to, you know, he didn't choose his weather. I'm going to only walk on nice days where the temperature is not too hot. He did every day. So that's, that's kind of, and there's math in here. And the students could do the math if they wanted. Well, how do you get that? How did you get that, you know, that he did that 70,000 steps? It's math. Third page is this. Okay, I'll let you read it. So if, if he was, he ran for 143 days, that number of kilometers. So I'll either ask uh, Craig or uh, Chris to throw out a number and I'll drag the slider. How many, these are in, in that, so that's at 5 million. We can't put, uh, uh, we can't put uh, com, um, the good commas in there, but it's at 5 million. So do you want to guess what Terry Fox ran? No idea. Let's go with uh, 15 million. Okay. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't go that high. It doesn't go. Okay. But, but, but it's a really good, it's a really good, I'll just go to here. I'm at what? Seven and a half million. Now check my estimation. Ten million. Ten million steps. It's, it's, to me, it's mind boggling. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm, uh, you know, the chances of, of me doing 10 million steps in my life, and this, this uh, gentleman did in severe health uh, conditions, uh, weather conditions. So it, it, brings, it brings it into the concrete. And there's, strictly speaking, there's no coding in this. They could go into an editor, and I'm going to do it soon, but they could go into the editor is, and do this. We did 60 centimeters uh, for Terry Fox, which is the average of what a 10 to 12 year old uh, stride is, the length of a step. Because we said an adult would do this. We know he has an artificial leg and he, he probably couldn't go as far. So we, we chose a random number, but you could challenge the students. How many, what's the length of the step of the, the center for the Toronto Raptors basketball team? Do you think it's 60 centimeters? Probably not. So what about your little brother, sister, who's three years old? Do they have a, a step or a stride of 60 centimeters? Probably not. So you can go into all sorts of, of interesting discussions. Uh, does Do a man and a woman have the same step? So how does age affect it? How does your size affect it? They're all, they're all variables. And you could play with the numbers inside the editor for kids who wanted to sort of go on a more advanced uh, scale. Okay, last project. Okay, you should be seeing Terry Fox tribute now. And now, um, if you want to put the third one in in the slide, uh, Craig, the they got it, I think, when they registered. But the 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 cards for this, again, there's a set of cards. I have some printed ones but you can um, use the PDFs. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at links and now the point of all of this is for the students to go in and tell an interactive story about Terry Fox. So what you, you're in player mode right now. Player mode means if I shared this with grandma, grandpa, this is what they would see. This is like a cover page of a book. It's just sort of just telling you what the project is. I'm going to click the arrow and it goes to a new page. I'm on the inside. Think of it as the table of contents. In this project, 
the, the students could make the following things, adding backgrounds, animations, telling a story, adding text, adding their voice. This, this is just giving them a model of what could be done. But the fun part is we hope for the, and the learning is here's your blank canvas. Go tell us your story of what you think about Terry Fox and the Marathon of Hope. So title page, sort of table of contents. Now go and, and get into it and do it. So I'm going to get into links right now. Again, this text-based intro to text-based right after block coding. So I'm going to hit edit. Get rid of these things here. So I'm in an editor now. You see it's different. So I've got tools all over the place. I've got different things here. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the left. I'm in the gear. Gear is settings. The kids can change their setting from dark to light. Maybe I'll leave it like that. And I can use huge fonts so you'll be able to see what I type better. There's all sorts of things they can, they can add over here. I want to go to page three, though, because page one and two are done. I'm on my blank canvas. Now I want things to happen over here. So the first thing is I want to put a background on, right? You did see one over here. You saw two backgrounds. So if I go to page three, my blank canvas, I've got a turtle. And maybe some of you have done logo before. This is the turtle from logo. I'm going to use this turtle like I would use an actor in a school play. The student is the director giving orders to the turtle. The turtle does nothing until the director student decides what they're going to do. So the first thing I want to do is get a background on. I go to my clip art. On the left, there's a little house. And again, this is all in the PDF that 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 Craig put in, in the chat. So. You don't have to worry, just get the big picture right now. Don't, you don't have to worry about the exact uh, lines of coding. It's all explained step by step. So I have clip art in there. I have customized clip art for a Terry Fox project. So if I wanna get a background, uh, I'll choose this one. I'm, I, we're, I almost see some trees like this. So I can, Go into the clip art pane, the house. There's 128 different uh, cells. I'm gonna choose cell 32. I got a little white hand there. I'm gonna click and click, click and click directly on the turtle. It's like I'm giving a costume to the turtle, like in a school play. That turtle will still move with the costume. We don't want that to happen and we'll stop that in a sec. The other thing I'm noticing is it's not exactly the size of the background. There's some white here. So I can go down in the command center underneath the picture. You see my cursor flashing. And I can say, I can start typing S. And because I have a learner mode on, this is like an iPhone, which... Uh, uh, forgotten the phrase now. It predicts, you know, autocomplete. Autocomplete. What What do you think I'm trying to type? So it has to be a command. These are all commands. All programming languages have commands. I'm going to choose set size. I want to make that picture bigger. When I see the command in green like that, I know it's a command that that Lynx understands. It works. It's going to work. I'm going to do a space and I'm going to choose 50 as a size. All sizes start at 40. I know that. Uh, the kids will know that, but this, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger and fine, good, it filled up the, the, the space. So commands are in green. You can get little mini definitions of the command if you leave the cursor over one letter and something called a tool tip pops up. The tooltip is a mini explanation and it ends with an example. So the example here was 15. Why don't I change it to 15? I think we all know what's going to happen. Got really small. So I'm going to go back to 50 because it worked. So before you get concerned about I don't know coding languages, 
there's about 10 words you need to know to do this project. 10. And when I, a thing like set size is not, it's not what I call very officially gobbledygook. I mean, it's a word if you parsed it apart, you'd say, I understand what it means. Set your size to, you know, if you said to a, you know, someone you ran into a bear, make yourself big, you know, so the bear would run away. People would say, you set your size to very large and scare, scare the, uh, the bear. Okay, so I've got a background. I want to get my turtle back because it's a background now. Actually, I want to do this. I do stamp. I want to stamp that. It's like I'm dropping a can of paint on the background. I'm gonna, I want that costume to be on the background and not movable. I hit enter. Now see what's happened. I still have a turtle wearing that sort of autumn background, but behind it, there is a fixed immovable scene. I just like, I, I literally, I, I took that image and I dumped the can of paint on the white canvas and it's there. But I still have the turtle with it, but I want to get the turtle back to its original black shape. So I set the shape to zero. There's that. So the turtle moves. The background doesn't. I want to get Terry. I'm going to name this turtle Terry in a second to move along the road like he's running from uh, one city or one town to another. So what am I going to do? And I'm going to make a mistake on purpose and, and the students will make the mistake. I'm going to say, just like in English, go forward. Go forward. And I'll, I'll, I'll give a number. And this is trial and error. If I say a really low number, it's just going to move a little bit. If I do 30, and these are pixels, by the way. So three pixels, go 30 pixels. It's going in the wrong direction. I don't want, I want Terry to run along the road from left to right. So what do I have to do? I have to point her or him in the right direction. And it's just like degrees on a compass. So if I, if I say Terry or turtle, set your heading, just started to pop it up and the autocomplete came in. Set your heading to degrees on a compass. You know, there's 360 degrees. If I want the turtle to go from left to right, again, a good classroom discussion. How many degrees should that turtle move or turn if I wanted the turtle to go left to right? Well, I mean, since we don't have a ton of time, I'll, I'm sure you'll, you know the answer, but I'll just type it in. Set your heading to 90. And now go forward. Okay, so they've got the turtle going in the correct direction. In this case, they wanted to go along the road. I could write a set of instructions. I could say go forward 30, wait a little bit, pause, just like you saw pause in, in make code. And I'll just do the abbreviation for forward to save time. And I'll do wait again. So go forward 30, pause a bit, wait one is one tenth of a second, and go forward 30 and wait one again. Enter. So you saw a little movement, stop movement. Okay, so that's getting the turtle along the road. I can add another command, a, a repeat, a loop. Repeat five times. Whatever the instructions are inside the closed brackets beside the letter P. Whatever the instructions are inside the closed brackets, square brackets, do that five times. So now I'm going to hit enter. So now you see we've got a, a moving turtle across the screen. So all the students want to get the animations going first, it's, a, it's kind of a mistake. It's better to get the boring mechanics of the code and the movement first. 
and then add the animation to it. Because if you do the reverse, you don't know which way the turtle's going, et cetera. And um, you'll probably, the students will probably be unhappy. So that's an, a, a common error that the student makes, the students make. They want to jump right into nice animations. But I can do that now because I know this works. I got the heading right and I got the movement right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do set shape. I'm going to change it from zero. Space. Open square brackets. One space, two space, three space. Now I'm going to hit enter. Okay, I've got, I'm going to move Terry there so we can see it. It's not moving, but he's got at least one costume on. And I'm going to hit the next line, the repeat five. Okay, now, now we have an animation of Terry moving across the screen. Now, remember, these, the repeat five, forward 30 and wait one are my choices. Students can make whatever choices they want. They could re reduce this to three, uh, for example, and they could say repeat 10 times. Let's see what happens. It's kind of a nicer animation, probably more realistic. Uh, without getting into too much detail, they can change the repeat 10 to forever. Forever, guess what? It doesn't need an input because it goes on forever until the end of this, this uh, webinar. Now, I know I can hit, there's a little, like in an old VCR, uh, square little button there, I can stop it. So there's not a ton of uh, code here. Uh, they have to make a, a few trial and errors to get things going. But what they would do, I call this command center the test area. It's like your rough draft. If things work over here, what they do is they go over to the keyboard here on the left and they make something that's called a procedure. A procedure is teaching a new command to uh, links for this project. These are commands links understands. All the ones in green, links understands. If I write learn Quebec, it's not gonna turn green. I'm not gonna get an error. But it knows the stuff in green, but I can teach it something new for this project. And I'm going to create a procedure and I'll go. Now I'm going to do just for fun. I'm going to do, do learn Quebec QC. One word, one word. I'm just going to copy. This stuff works. That's the point of the testing area. And I'm going to say this and I'll change it in a second to just. Actually, I should. Right? This stuff all worked. It changes to repeat, so we'll just see it begin and stop. And a rule with procedures is I have to have one word on the final line, end. Basically, it means I've, I've, I've finished defining the procedure. This new word I taught links should work. Let's try it out. I'm going to just copy and paste it because I'm lazy. I'm going to take it from the procedures and to put it in here. I'm going to hit enter. There it goes. So there's a lot you can do with links. There was far more than what uh, I've been able to show you. They can add backgrounds. They can add anim make animations. They can add a text box over here. Plus sign, I add things to the project. I want to add a text box. And now they can link it to what they did before. Today in the park, I uh, walked, I don't know, 2,000 steps. T Fox did, and you can get, you know, we're not going to do the whole thing. They can format all of this, make it really big. 
can change the color of it, etc. They can make it bold, hide the background, etc. They can add text boxes to uh, tell the story of Terry Fox. They can add multiple pages. Uh, they can add sound and music to it. They can add the Canadian anthem if they wanted. They uh, they can add a hyperlink. I know. I think Chris had a hyperlink to the Terry Fox Foundation. They could add a hyperlink that would take them to that um, sound buttons, etc. Uh, they can add their own sample clip art. Sorry, going to go down here. There's empty cells. So if if by chance Grandma Grandpa met Terry Fox when he ran through Quebec decades ago. They can add, they can just click plus and they can add in JPEGs, PNGs and things like that. Um, a photo of their family or the town that they he ran, ran through, uh, all sorts of them. They can make an interactive story and they can start with the, the micro bit to calculate the steps, then they can add it into this final um, storytelling project. And of course, then they can publish this they can make a link for this and they can send it to uh, grandma, grandpa uh, who lives somewhere else, et cetera. And, and they want to show them what their, their grandchild did. So totally shareable works on Chrome. It's, it's browser based. So it works on Chromebooks, windows, Macs. Generally it's harder to make it work on a, on an iPad only because there's no physical keyboard. So if you had a physical keyboard attached to your, um, iPad, it, it would be fine. So um, I'm I'm running out of time, and we should have some time for wrap up and questions and answers. So uh, maybe I'll just do that now. I'll stop this. So there's there's three parts of the project. I'd love you to love all three. If you loved one, I'd be happy to. So it's up to you. I'm not going to dictate what you think is appropriate for uh, your your students and your situation. Any questions? It's pretty fascinating, Michael. It's really cool. I love how data can tell stories and become alive, you know, particularly with the kids experiencing it and then recording their own data and then playing with it. I think it's just like a great sequence of events. Uh, and I was scared of line coding all the time but just with those 10 commands it seems like there's a plethora of things that you can do absolutely absolutely and honestly the, it's all it's all laid out in these i mean it's it's literally uh, you know a recipe and if you right. follow the steps you should not uh, end up with a disaster in the kitchen you know <laughs> if i follow that metaphor and I like right. students working together. So I, I actually prefer the two com two students per computer model because they can check each other's work. So right. guess what their number one problem will be? It's it's they'll make spelling mistakes. So, but if student number two can see student number one, you spelt the word wrong. That's why it's not working. That's that's 80% of the the problem is is just. It didn't work. Like I made a mistake doing micro bits. I was talking, I forgot to change the variable. Okay, so I look back and I saw that's not working. So I have to go change my variable name. So I think I think just having them work together, following the recipe book, they, sh they should not, no one, teachers or students should be intimidated by uh, this example of text-based coding. I think it could be a nice introduction and then kind of just letting the kids go for it, right? Like, because it is kind of a recipe book, it's it's something that you don't have to all, like, have all the kids moving at the same pace or... Um, no, no, not... Kind a, of go at it, it's their own. Not at all. And and embrace the two or three students who are super comfortable with text-based coding and, you know, appoint them deputies or whatever you want to, you know, <laughs> let them wander around the classroom and help other students. Uh, they'll like it. They'll they'll feel good about themselves and, you know, take some of the weight off your shoulders 
honestly. So um, yeah, go for it. So I'll, I'll put in the, uh, so we have a short survey because we have to tell the federal government, you know, why do you exist and why are you doing things? So if you take a few minutes, it's very short. Um, you can answer it now or when you get home or whatever, but you could also write in, you know, I'm interested in doing this part of the project. I am local. So depending on, you know, how far away or I'm, I'm, I'm even willing to go if it's, if it's feasible and if it's permitted, I can go to some schools and work with you and work with the kids. I, I you know, I, as opposed to me having to hop on a, on a plane to Toronto and Ottawa, this would be more fun. <laughs> So know that that Michael's stuff as well that he he has all those three sites that he kind of works on. So code to learn, taking it global, and also the Linux, which we were just on. Tons of great projects on them. Um, please do enter the feedback. Uh, that's always uh, good for us to have. Um, and Michael, I just want to thank you. This is really fun. Um, I love doing hands-on stuff and kind of doing code alongs like this. Um, just a shout out, tomorrow we are doing um, another webinar with Let's Talk Science. Again, some of our responsibility as Quebec uh, nonprofit is to kind of make these networking connections. So come join us again. Um, and thank you again, Michael. That was really great. Super fun. Okay. We'll have to do this again. Fair enough. Fair enough. I <laughs> hope you're, you're all... Uh psyched and uh, don't hesitate i'm really happy to do something in quebec <laughs> we'll right support the, the coding we'll support the micro bit so don't worry about the coding and even if you partner up with another teacher it's a lot for the phys ed teacher you're already doing the terry fox run so partner up with a teacher maybe they can take care of the coding a colleague does the coding piece and you do the actual run bring the the students outside um so i think that's worked well with the micro bit is partnering up with them with other classes Sounds point, good. Point. All right, all. Well, thanks so much for joining us today.